good, guys. We are now down here by the Yoga Nyan Ledges. It's now half past nine, pushing tide. So we're going to try and catch a couple of rock cod. I'm just going to start dipsticking for them first. When the tide pushes more, we'll start throwing baits a little bit further and trying to catch stumpies and pompana. So I'm just getting my old trusty saltiga all set up. It's a three to five. And gumboots, obviously very important gumboots. And yeah, we'll have some fun here and see what happens. So basically what I'm using is circle hooks. Um, my standard Mission Rock Trace, a little bit of a green flotation on it. Not that it's that important during the daylight, but at night time these things definitely work extremely well. Um, so attach a little bell sinker to the end of the trace. And I'm using chocker as bait, and I'll just show you quickly how we do it. I just want to get a sinker there quickly. I'll use a 3 ounce because I need a bit of movement. And Murphy's Law is always the one that you want to find that you battle to get out. There we go, a little three ounce. 16 kilo nylon, so if I do get stuck, at least the, the nylon snooting will break on it. This is the bait I'm using, a fresh Adcan um, chocker, as you can see. And I'm telling you now, that stuff is unbelievable for fishing here. It's nice, it's white. I'll just tie this on and I'm going to show you how we rig it. And like I said before, the target species that we're looking for is definitely going to be rock cod. And I'm using quite a heavy hook snoot and line. Okay, so what we do is just quickly open this up. Lovely white meat. Basically, doing is cutting strips out of it. So we take it like this, cut strips. It's a very quick and easy bait to use for this type of fishing. So that's it there. Grab okay, my chocker hammer, a little bit of cotton. How we do it is a little bit of the thicker chocker we just lightly smash to give a bit more smell out there. Just cut pieces like that. Okay, so bottom hook. And these are our standard um, tuna circles, our silver ones. Silver hook, white bait. And all I'm doing is I'm just going to attach some of it. Like so. And we just pull it over the actual hook. Like that. Take some of our uh, chocker pieces that we've cut. Two pieces. And we just lightly get it just to get a bit more of the smell out. Not too much. So basically, the whole bait ends up looking like that. The rock will come along and eat it, the peckers will come. That part is exposed and hopefully we get a, a on with a rock hard. So let me just do the next one. And all we're doing is just threading it through. Nothing fancy whatsoever. And you can feel this Adcan chocker is very oily. So I've got great faith in them. And they work well. There we go. Ready to go. And if you want to and you're worried about the, the peckers and that, just take this top piece of chocker that you've knocked into a, a little bit of a foamy froth just like that just makes it a little bit harder but gives a lot of smell and let's go play this is our guest angler Gerald 
How you doing? Glad yeah. to have you here. Nice to be here. Help yourself. There's a trace. You see what I've done? Knock yourself out. I'll see you on the rocks. Cheers. And uh, red eye is probably the best bait for rock art. So, uh, and some prawn. So I'm gonna be putting bloody messy baits. Doesn't have to look the prettiest for the rock art. They don't mind the ugly bait. As long as it's bloody enough, they charge. I just had a bite now. I think I was stuck. So I didn't get a good hook up. But I'm gonna hook him now, this bait. So there's it yeah. Catfish rock out on my second throw. I missed him on the first throw. He bit and uh, I missed it. Sinker got stuck. So I went back through in the same hole and uh, got him out. He's uh, quite a decent size, not the biggest. You can feel in here he's got a crayfish in his tummy. You should be able to see it when I open his mouth. There we go. There's a feeler. And uh, he's, these guys are ferocious hunters so the tummies will be full, they're very greedy. And, uh, They'll still tie your bait, eh? So, good fish, I'm happy. First fish for the morning. Saltest 8,000, 40 pound, 40 pound J bread. And my new medium elite. So, yeah, I'm chuffed. Guys, remember that these, these fish are very residential. Uh, they sort of pretty much stay in the same reef their entire life. So, in order to sustain them, we have to put them back as, and obviously keep as little as we can. So, this guy is gonna go back, back to his house. And uh, it's gonna make more rock art babies fast to catch. So, guys, if you look at what he's doing, so he's gonna find a hole and he's gonna go in the hole now. There we go, gone under. That's where they live, guys. It's exactly how these rock art feed if you look at where he is now. So, that's the reason for having that short trace. So, if you've got a long trace of the float, your float's gonna come above this area where he's living. And he's not going to come out and feed in a hurry during the day. But at daytime, if you keep that bait right in front of his hole, he's going to come up and smash, snatch it quickly and try and get back into his hole. So I'm going to try and take him out of here. It's going to be a bit tricky. I hope there's nothing else in here. I've had my hand bitten a few times by uh, other fish. So if you look at what he's trying to do, guys, have a look at this, spreading his gill plates out. That's, that's, one of, that's what exactly what they do when they're stressed and they want to hide into their hole. So they open up their gill plates and they're going to sit in the crevices. So that's why you find when you hook rock out, you get stuck a lot. So that's why we fish heavy for them. We obviously don't want to lose them firstly. And the second thing is obviously co conservation wise, you don't want to leave them with hooks in their mouth. Oh God. Yeah, give me a hard time now. guys just try and be careful and try and get as close over the ledge and throw them over the ledge all right so try not to keep them in the drain they might get washed out so although this it's deep enough here i'd rather throw him over the ledge all right guys i mean you can have a look at the terrain where we're fishing it's a lot of muscles a lot of rock very slippery so take the necessary precautions and wear the right boots. Uh, Kingfisher offer a wide range of boots that you can use. Uh, perfect for this terrain. And if you fall guys on those muscles, it's gonna hurt you real bad. So if you can wear something that covers your, uh, 
your legs a bit. So if you do fall, it offers a little bit of protection so that you don't get scarred too much, you don't get cut open. Well, I'm chuffed. I'm gonna go put another bait quickly. Did you catch a few more rock art? And then later on as the tide pushes, I'll fish for that stumpy of Pompano. Quick release, lengthen fish. There it goes, there. Unfortunately, with fishing in the reef comes these buggers. And I think the best way to try and get, get rid of them from your hook is to keep them in the water. Let him stay in the water for a while until he stops tangling himself up. And just shake him around. Now that was, that was messed my entire trace up. Anyway. That one, no. Not, not great guys. Anyway, it comes with fishing in the reef guys. I'm gonna go sort this mess out. A couple of throws here and the, well these guys dipped um, we're gonna move to another spot while the tide's still low and see if we can uh, find something there We're getting out the big guns now, the secret weapon is coming out from underneath the bottom here. Yeah? <laughs> One little bay squid. Okay, back of him, there's the back. Sharp knife. Open him up. Like so. I personally take this off. Other people leave it on. It's up to you. Take a chocker hammer. Just lightly beat him so that the cotton will actually hold to it. Start in one corner. And all we do is we just wrap it like a cigar. Some thin cotton. And we just wrap it. Around, down, around, around the hook a couple of times just so it sits properly. Then we take the head part, we lay it on top like so. We start laying cotton over it. And then we just crisscross it across the top like that. And that's pretty much our base squid. We just take a little part out, which is the teeth of it. Okay. Slightly hit those tentacles, just to soften them up a bit. There we go. And that's basically what you're looking at. Some guys like to break the ink sack there, I just leave it on. It's up to you. The water is very clean. Fishing a white bait here. And that's it. Now let's see if we go and get a bite.